Well, if you made it to the Wednesday program after our Monday and Tuesday, maybe you see the same vision that I do. This is Truth to Ponder with Bob Bierman. Well, here we are. We made it to to the middle of the week, Wednesday, here on Truth to Ponder, both your radio show and podcast. I want to take a little time here at the beginning of the program just to share a number of thoughts that are going through my mind since we last gathered on Monday and Tuesday and the things that have been on my mind as I produce those two programs. I'm just at a point, as you've probably gathered, it's time to be proactive and not just an observer. It is time to be doers of God's Word and not just hearers. You know, that's what the Bible tells us. And too many programs that I... I've been noticing of late too many people on radio, television, podcast, videos, they can tell you all the bad things going on in the world. Well, look at this. You know, this is horrible. This is going to be terrible. Look at the well, look at the Biden administration is going to do to travel or churches or or schools or we can go down the list. Last week on Friday, the Friday and weekend edition. I pose the the question, what fills your mind? And if all you do every evening, and I've been guilty of it myself, so I'm not not coming down on anybody. I'm coming down really even on myself. Many of us, we listen to programs like this. We watch, if you have cable or satellite, many people will put on something like Newsmax or Uh, Maybe Fox News at night, Laura Ingram, Sean Hannity, Tucker Carlson. uh, You know know the players. Maybe you read newspapers like Epic Times. Maybe you get newsletters from Lou Rockwell and, 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 and all these other voices out there. And one of the things that I've had to do early on in this radio show is spend a lot of time sorting through a lot of stuff. And suddenly, last week, it started to get to me. And I was having some very, very terrible, sleepless, strange nights, weird dreams, tossing and turning. I woke up in the morning even more tired than when I went to bed. And I'm going, Lord, what gives here? And I also noticed that the first half of last week, putting together the programs was much harder than it had been in prior weeks. Normally, I can get my material together, come into my little tiny studio, and, you know, in a a couple of hours, three hours, I've, I've got the show done with the editing, and then I have to distribute it and a little write up, you know, for the podcast side of it. But last week, I kept having to stop and pause and and I couldn't, I just couldn't get myself together. Seemed like every time I turned around, it, it just, my mind was drawing a blank. I was just physically, mentally, and spiritually exhausted. It hit me. I have pushed myself a wee bit too far. And then I had to analyze and say, Lord, okay, what am I doing wrong here? And as I said on Friday, reminded you if you listen on Monday and Tuesday, I kind of echoed some of the the same thought process. Part of the problem is I'm spending more time looking at the, the troubles and trials and tribulations of this world and less time than I should be in God's Word where there's hope, where there's life, where there's salvation, where there's a plan. For for people in the United States, let's be honest. When it comes to matters of our faith, in particular, or our free speech and other things, we've taken them for granted for a long time. We've had them. We, we didn't worry about sharing our opinion and that opinion causing us to lose stature in our communities, bank accounts being taken away. And that day's coming. 
our social, our environmental, our, our credit scores, so to speak. That day is coming. But too many people that claim to know Jesus Christ are more worried about who is the beast, who is the, what is the mark, uh, when, when is it all coming down? It's kind of like we'll do something at the last moment when we get there. And we're approaching this thing all wrong. Number one, if you are looking at this disastrous, strange world, things happening in the Middle East, and I don't care what some of these guys that have written off Israel think, you know, that, oh, yeah, Israel, it's it's not, you know, your, your faith is not endured, it's not there. Well, for those that are trying to move Israel to the United States or Great Britain or somewhere else or into their church, God made a promise to his people. God will not break that promise. If you believe that that God has turned his back on Israel, then God breaks his promises. So, you know, do we believe him or not? So if anybody is giving you that nonsense in a radio program or a TV program or anything, walk away from it because they're telling you that God is not a God of his word and he can't be trusted. So let's get that out of the way right right up front. There's a lot happening in the Middle East we need to watch. There's a lot happening in Europe we need to keep our eyes on. There's a lot happening right here in our own nation. Our borders are being opened up for people to come in from all over the world. I'm not a heartless individual, but what kind of life are they going to create for themselves, and why couldn't they fix it where they came from? What is the real plan of those that are pushing that agenda? It's certainly it's certainly not what they give you at face value. It's certainly not for the benefit of those poor souls coming in from Central America. It's to profit people that want to pay low wages and ensure one party rule in the United States. That's that's what it is. Then we have the cancel culture. We've talked about it a lot. Good. It is what it is. And maybe I don't want to be a part of the world's culture anymore. Maybe I don't care what Mark Zuckerberg thinks about the things that I post on Facebook. I don't care at all what Jack Dorsey at Twitter thinks anymore. Waste of my time. Waste of your time. People are so afraid of being kicked off Facebook, and Facebook is becoming more more of a time bandit. I'm having to be careful of even the things that I look at. I'm looking at that long friends list that have developed over the past 10 years, and I'm going to start culling through it. I'm, if I don't know who these some of you are, and if I don't see your stuff, and I, I take a little look at your page, and, and we're not connecting like we should in terms of our faith, our, our work, and our goals, no offense, but I'm going to have to you know, just let you go off to the world you live in. I need to narrow that list on Facebook. I'm not going to fight spiritual warfare on Facebook any longer. It's a waste of, of time. I used the expression the other day. It's like the old, you know, the pig wrestling a pig in the mud. The pig loves it. Well, why waste your time doing it if you know that it's going to be to no real avail? We have a lot of work to do in God's kingdom, those that claim to know Christ. And the work we have to do is not just electing candidates to an office. It's not trying to just fix the politics. It goes far deeper. Because the Bible's made it clear that there is a direction and a path for this world, and it's been on that path for 2,000 years, and it's not going to change. There is a time of destiny, whether it's coming soon or down the road a bit, I don't know. I do know that Jesus made it clear, St. Paul made it clear, all of the apostles made it clear, that being a follower of Christ is not does not win you any popularity contest. It doesn't make life easy. It doesn't make life profitable. It doesn't guarantee any of that. 
and preachers that say that, you know, you can have your piece of the pie into here and now instead of the sweet by and by, turn your back on them. You don't need to listen to the Reverend Ike mentality any longer. It's a fake and phony one anyway. We don't need to be stockpiling 7 or 8 or 10 or 25 or 30 years of food. It's not what God called us to do. Reasonable preparations. Taking care of each other. Assembling ourselves. The writer of Hebrews says it really well. Forsaking not the assembling of thyselves, which is the matter of some, but even so the more as you see that day approaching. If we become so dependent upon the world, what alternative are we going to have? Let me say that again. If we become so dependent upon the things and the spirit of this world, then we become, that's where, we, that's where we've placed our faith. Our faith is in the things of the world. Our faith is in Amazon. Our faith is in whatever. I don't worry about a lot of this stuff. What I really should be worrying about is, Lord, what are you calling your people to do? What is the labor you have for us today? What things should we be doing now to, to deal with the world we're entering? I don't expect a sudden change in our government to save everything and give us this wonderful respite for maybe two or four years. Of course, I'm going to vote in a couple of years. Of course, I'll vote again in four years or any election I'm supposed to vote in. But I'm not putting my hope and my trust in politics. And I'm not going to sit and worry about the news every night, hour after hour, day after day, swimming in the sewer of sin. I'm not going to do it anymore. I will spend a reasonable amount of time to know the things that I need to know to help you be prepared. But I need to focus, as I told you these past several days, this, this radio program is gradually shifting direction. Let me give you a few things that are in the back of my mind as, we, as I'm pondering and my wife and I are praying. Right now, let's look at the radio side for just a moment, the shortwave radio side. I'll do this very quickly. We are on WRMI basically two times a day, uh, well, three times a day, Monday, Tuesday, Thursday, Friday, and two times on Wednesday. And most of our listenership on shortwave is via WRMI. We're currently, I'm not sure of how this is going to continue, but currently also at 11 p.m. Eastern, 8 Pacific on KVOH in California. Right now, I'm not hearing a whole lot from California, so I'm, I'm having to think, what do we do? I know the value of this medium and I want to keep it I want to keep it going. And there's some there's some things that I'm working on technically. I am an engineer by trade. I've been doing that for 40 some odd years. And I'm working on something. And I'm praying that it'll all come together. I'm getting ready to do some emails and a little bit more negotiating. But I also recognize that I'm only on a limited time on WRMI. Now, there are a lot of antennas, a lot of transmitters, and there's probably probably ways of reaching more of the United States more often over a longer period of time on any given Monday through Friday. And I'm praying about investing a little bit more in WRMI. Actually, quite a bit more. Where we're trying to see if we have the resources to do it. And are we willing to take the risk? Is it what God is calling us to do? To lay some money into this project and make a, make a few things happen? I don't know. We're getting close. You know, instead of being on a couple of hours a day or three hours a day, what, what would happen if it was six or eight hours a day, different frequencies reaching California better, reaching into Washington State, reaching into Oregon, reaching into Arizona, uh, 
reaching into Texas better, reaching into Oklahoma better, you know, the, these other regions. We do very well heading toward Michigan and Ohio and and uh, Illinois. We do well. Indiana, do, do we do great. Upstate New York, we're doing fine. Virginia, North Carolina, South Carolina, all that, all the eastern coast, we, we, we pretty well cover a good chunk of it. But a lot of the middle part of the country gets lost, and the western part is definitely gone. And maybe some additional hours when others could listen when they can't listen, you know, basically at 5 or 6 o'clock in the afternoon Eastern time, or which would be more like 4 or 5 Central. So I'm praying that God will open up some doors. And I'm really, really beginning to feel, I've talked about this a lot, but I've been waiting for this kind of, peace from God to move to the next level. I I think I said the other day that I've got this little computer sitting right here on my desk, real small one, and it's an amazing little box. I've put two different softwares on it to see if they will work. They could run a music stream. They could run uh, a talk format stream. You know, I I don't need to be using other people's ways of streaming. We need to be creating our own. You know, we don't need to be relying on Facebook. You know, there are a lot of other up, uh, companies starting up right now. We, you know, Facebook, Facebook wields their power because they have so many users and they have so much money. But if, you're, if you don't sign up, if you're not going there, then they don't make anything out of you. And if you're not using them, then them cutting you off does, doesn't hurt you at all. I look at some of these up-and-coming social media sites. One is called Gab, G-A-B, and we are there. I haven't used it enough because I need help. I mean, and I'll tell you that, I said it yesterday, I'll say it again today. I can't do all of this on my own. I'm 66. I'd like to, I'll be honest, I told my wife this morning before I started recording this program, I'd like to grow this program, grow some other things, work in partnership with other entities that maybe do things like Gab, or there's another up-and-coming one that reached out to me, and I'm reaching out to them again. It is called Dansgate, D-A-N-S-G-A-T-E, Dansgate.com, and it's brand new. has a few people using it now. It just, just opened up. And maybe working with others like Dansgate or Gab, maybe even use MeWe, Parler. I just want to spread it out where I'm not going to be worrying about what what somebody in Silicon Valley thinks about this radio program someday and decides we need to pull the plug because it's just not socially acceptable to them. I know someday some of the radio medium is not going to be available. Because you're talking about that hate speech stuff, you know, that Bible thing we don't want you to talk in public about. You know, you got to hide it in your buildings. Well, have our own streaming, our own platforms. It can be done. But see, I can't do all of this for you. I'm just the retired guy that you're hearing on the radio trying to help you and guide you and share with you some some ideas to help make this all come together. I would love to have a couple of other websites. You know, I've got, I, I try to maintain the Truth to Ponder, Truth, the number two, ponder.com website. I do that. But I don't have a whole lot of time to do any updates on it. I could use some help. I don't have any money to pay anybody, but I could use some help. I've thought about having like a a magazine online, so to speak. But I can't do it all. I can't write it all. I can't be taking all the pictures. I can't be the art director. I can't be the editor of, of all of it. But maybe you have that talent, but you've never had the opportunity to start something like that. I've got a friend of mine up in Pennsylvania. I'm not going to say where or who, but... He runs a website that I helped him put together about 11 years ago. Hadn't talked to him in ages. Other night, got an email out of nowhere. Hey, how are you doing? And I said, well, you know, your website, I know you keep putting stuff on it, but it's time for a makeover. I might give him a little bit of help. But see, 
He's got a news and information website. We need a lot of them. We don't need just one. When you have too many, then you're a really easy target. That's why Parler got shot down. They were an easy target. They were the competition to Twitter. And they had put all their eggs in the Amazon basket. And they got Google and they got Apple mad at them. So, poof, their app is gone from the store. Or there are ways you can put them on yourself on the Google anyway. And then the next thing that happened, well, we don't want you on our servers anymore. Poof, they were gone for a month. And they're just trying to restart themselves now. Gab, G-A-B, gab.com, they've had a really rough time because they're using their own servers, which is a good thing. But a lot of the banks like the Bank of Americas and the Visas and the MasterCard processors, oh, you have some of that Christian hate speech on, no, you you might be a white supremacist, uh, you know, we, we can't have your type around, uh, we can't have you at, associated with our bank, so no, we're closing your account. You'll get your money back in a month. This has happened to them numerous times. And so this is why I'm saying the Bible says, come out from among them and and do not touch the unclean thing. It's really simple, but we're not doing it. We're busy hanging around the unclean thing, thinking that, well, you know, we can use it and we're going to win the hearts and minds of people. Mm, Doubtful. In all my 11 years, 12 years on Facebook, I haven't converted anybody's politics or faith, period. Period. They come in, they're ready to argue and fight you. In the world of social media, for the most part, the big tech social media, either you're communicating with those that you are like-minded with, or you're arguing with those that are coming to that forum to debate you. They have no desire to be changed, and they will not. That's been my experience. Why not not do what? Our Lord tells us to do and how we should share his message, share his gospel. First, we need to, we as Christians need to encourage each other, work together with each other, instead of trying to be little islands out there. And I want to use this radio program to connect us even more. It may not be tomorrow. I might be having a guest tomorrow, but I know definitely on Friday, I'm going to give you even more direct ways of things we can do. Like I say, I'd like to have more airtime on shortwave. I'd like to find people that can help me. I'm not being paid right now. I'm just trying to use anything that comes in to buy that airtime and and build up these things. And someday, you know, my real goal is someday to to say, Lord, send me somebody to replace me. I don't want this I don't want this show to perpetually and forever be about me. Or anything that I build. I've got this thing called Ancient Word Radio. It's just one stream. I was praying by now to have three or four, but I'm just at the first. Which is nothing but a very calming, sacred music stream that people all over the world listen to. But there are other streams we could develop, uh, even an app. And I think we could keep it in such a way as not to be, quote, offensive. And just be another channel to tie us together run it through a website as well you might just need help you know how to do wordpress you know how to do concrete five let me know i mean we gotta we've got to start working together i put myself out there because god said do it you know in other words i can remember you know heart the voice of jesus calling who will come and work today and i said here i am send me well I may share that song, maybe not today, but maybe tomorrow or Friday. It's a short little hymn. Hark the voice of Jesus calling, who will go and work today? Fields are ripe and harvest ready. Who will bear the sheaves away? Long and loud the master calleth, rich reward he offereth thee. Who will gladly answer saying, here am I, send me, send me. I can remember the words of that from my childhood. That's from memory. Is God saying it's time for you to do your work, do your part for his kingdom? Are you waiting for an engraved invitation? 
Are you waiting for trumpets to be blaring through your window? Are you waiting for you know God to send you a telegram knocking at your door? Maybe it's time you just say, Here I am, Lord, send me, send me. Pray about it. And let the Holy Spirit of God encourage you and show you where you need to be. Right now, we're going to take a break. We will be back on the other side. This is Truth to Ponder with Bob Bierman, the Headless Man. This is the nice Jewish boy, Jonathan Kahn, your Jewish connection, bringing you the riches of your Jewish roots in Jesus. Now get your pen out as fast as you can so you don't miss out on receiving a special free gift you're going to get and love in a moment. The word is Rosh. It's Hebrew for head. Try it. Rosh. Now, it's an important thing to have a head. See, when I was a kid, before I knew the Lord, I used to go out for Halloween. Now, Halloween costumes could be, you know, they cost money. So, But there's always a low-cost, no-work alternative. And that was, of course, the headless man outfit. All you needed was a jacket or sweater, which, of course, you had anyway. Then you just lifted your jacket or your shirt over your head, rang the doorbell, and stood there, looking stupid with your bag out, and trusting they were putting candy in it, since you couldn't see anything. The headless man was the stuff of horror movies from the days of Ichabod Crane onward. A man walking around without his head. That's pretty scary stuff. Well, the thing is, some of you, you're walking around without your head. Even in the Lord, you're walking around without your head. You've got everything, your new deluxe red letter study edition Bible, your concordance, your commentary, but you forgot your head. You're always running, always running around one way or another with the latest trend or the latest movement, the latest teaching, latest emotion, latest sign, latest wonder, latest problem, latest circumstance, latest anything, just running this way, this way, that way. You're following everything but the Lord. They tell you it's the spirit and you believe it. You know, it's your following feelings. One day God, you think God's telling you to get married. Next day you think he's telling you to get single. You think it's a matter of having the spirit. It's not. It's a matter of not having a head. It's the amazing headless Christian. You know, we're always to be open to the spirit, but we have to be grounded in the Lord. God gave you a head. Use it. So it's written, love the Lord with all your mind. And so it's written, keep your head. Because headless Christians are just plain scary. Want more? Ask for little monsters. Now, how'd you like to be faster than a speeding bullet, more powerful than a locomotive, able to leap tall buildings in a single bound, or how about just move mountains? You can. With Sapphires, the super spiritual supplement to turn your walk into a super life with God, plus the incredible mystery of the temple doors all free. How do you get all this? Easy. Just remember Jesus' Hebrew name, Yeshua, and dial it. That's all you do. Just dial 1-800-YESHUA-1. But call now, 1-800-YESHUA-1. Now, I invite you to join me in the Great Commission to bring salvation back to the Jewish people and reach millions of unreached peoples around the world on five continents. Just call now, 1-800-YESHUA-1. That's Y-E-S-H-U-A-1. Or write me direct, the nice Jewish boy, Box 1111, Lodi, L-O-D-I, New Jersey, the zip 07644. It's the nice Jewish boy, Box 1111, Lodi, L-O-D-I, New Jersey, 07644. Well, till next time, this is Jonathan Kahn saying Shalom Aleichem. Peace be to you, my friend, and Messiah, Sar Shalom, the Prince of peace. This is Truth to Ponder with Bob Bierman. And welcome back to part two of our Wednesday get-together here on the program Truth to Ponder. I'm your host, Bob Bierman. This segment, we're going to change gears just a little bit. We've been talking earlier this week and in the beginning of this this edition of the program about where the Lord is, is just talking to me and leading me in terms of this radio program. Now, tomorrow I plan to have a guest. We'll see. I think it should work out. We'll find out shortly. Have a guest. We started this program as a bit of a news magazine, uh, giving you information maybe you couldn't find somewhere else, but more and more, I really feel, as I I said earlier, that the direction of this program is going to be changing just a little bit. Instead of just focusing on the bad news of the day and trying to speculate on what things could be going forward, I think we need to be more definitive. This world is full of the armchair quarterbacks, the ones that observe and watch, but 
And they have great ideas, but they're not really doers. The Bible teaches that we need to be not just hearers of God's Word, but doers of God's Word. And I think sometimes the danger with many radio programs and podcasts of the nature that I'm doing, it just becomes an echo chamber. We know that there are issues in this world. And yes, I need to remind you of some maybe you didn't realize. But it can't stop just there. Too many of these end-time ministries that I have run across provide very few solutions. They just keep telling you how bad it is and what they think is going to be even worse coming next. When you look at the amount of time that Jesus spent talking about the end times. It's not the majority of what he shared in the scripture with his disciples. There are more important messages. Most people are familiar, even a lot of nominal and even some non-Christians have heard of John 3, 16. You know, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son... We know that. But that entire chapter, the entire chapter of uh, chapter 3 of St. John's Gospel, there's a lot in there. And I'd like to share just a part of it with you right now. Then I want to share something else in just a few minutes. And, And this is the exchange between Nicodemus and Jesus. And now remember, Nicodemus came to Jesus by night because he was a ruler of the Jews and he didn't want to be seen with this Jesus character just in case it didn't work out. Chapter 3, verse 1. There was a man of the Pharisees named Nicodemus, a ruler of the Jews. The same came to Jesus by night and said unto him, Rabbi, or teacher, we know thou art a teacher come from God. For no man can do these miracles that thou doest except God be with him. And Jesus answered and said unto him, Verily, verily, or truly, truly, I say unto thee, except a man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. Nicodemus said, or saith unto him, How can a man be born when he's old? How can he enter a second time to his mother's womb and be born? And Jesus answered, Verily, verily, I say unto thee, except a man be born of water and the Spirit, he cannot enter the kingdom of God. That which is born of the flesh is flesh, that which is born of the Spirit is spirit. Marvel not that I said unto thee, You must be born again. The wind bloweth where it listeth, and thou hearest the sound thereof, but cannot tell whence it cometh and whither it goeth, so is every one that is born of the Spirit. Nicodemus answered and said unto him, How can these things be? Jesus answered and said unto him, Art thou a master of Israel, and knowest not these things? Verily, verily, I say unto thee, We speak that we do not know, and we testify that which we have seen, and ye receive not our witness. If I have told you earthly things, and ye believe not, how shall ye believe if I tell you of of heavenly things? I want to stop right there for just a second. A lot of this radio program has dealt with the earthly things, the things we can see. The pandemic, the politics, the degradation, the falling apart, we, we, we chronicle that. We need to be talking more about so-called heavenly things. Picking up at verse 13. And no man hath ascended up to heaven, but he that come down from heaven, even the Son of Man, which is in heaven. And as Moses lifted up the servant in the wilderness, even so must the Son of Man be lifted up. This is a foreshadowing of his crucifixion, by the way. That whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have eternal life. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. For God 
sent not his Son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. He that believeth on him is not condemned, but he that believeth not is condemned already, because he hath not believed in the name of the only begotten Son of God. And this is the condemnation. Listen to this carefully. And this is the condemnation that the light has come into the world. Now, welcome to all time since the fall of man and even more obvious today. And this is the condemnation that light is come into the world and men love darkness rather than light because their deeds were evil. For every one that doeth evil hateth the light neither cometh to the light lest his deeds be reproved. And he that doeth truth cometh to the light that his deeds may be made manifest that they are wrought in God. And after these things came Jesus and his disciples unto Judea and there he tarried with them and baptized. Okay, I could read more of this but I think you get the gist. This is this is really a lot of the calling of this program. We can sit here and chronicle evil all day long. What good does it accomplish? There are plenty of radio programs, TV programs, podcasts, videos. There, there are tons of them out there. I need to find that balance of sharing with you information you can use, but also as we've been talking about Monday and Tuesday and the first part of this program today. What do we do about it? How do we take that knowledge? How do we apply it going forward? I want to share something with you. And it's hard to believe that this is going back four years now. Four years ago, 2017 in Florida, about uh, two weeks before a little over two weeks before Easter, I preached a message to a small congregation, and we dealt with some of this this chapter, John chapter 3. And I want to take you back four years ago and have you listen to this message to encourage your faith. Heavenly Father, as we come to this time to share some thoughts from your word. We pray the power of your Holy Spirit descend upon this place because we depend on that spirit for our illumination and our understanding. Bless the words that we have just heard that they may be grafted into our hearts. Amen. Amen. This text from Scripture we just heard from the Gospel has got enough material for at least 20 sermons. I could go on for weeks on just each verse, one by one. I mean, we just heard the most quoted verse in all of Scripture, John 3, 16. Wow, that one gets quoted. And we've heard this story about Nicodemus, and especially in the evangelical world, the emphasis on being born again. There is so much of our common Christian faith contained in this short little condensed part of the scripture in this book of John. It is no surprise that for many, many years and even to this day, one of the things that are handed out to potential converts to the Christian faith is a small little gospel of John. It's an easy book to read. You can get the entire story of Jesus in just a handful of chapters that are relatively easy to read. Now, in our story today, in this account, there's a few things that have always stood out that I would like to just kind of bring to mind from this passage we just heard. Nicodemus, notice it starts out, Nicodemus, a ruler of the Jews. 
he's an important individual, apparently. And how does he come to see Jesus? Does he come to see him by day? Does he go out where he is ministering to the crowds? No. He comes to him quietly by night. God forbid that this Jewish leader be seen with this rabble rouser, Jesus. But he's curious to know what's going on. And he calls him rabbi, teacher. But notice he still didn't want to be identified with him. He's trying to hedge the bet here. I don't want to give up my position. I don't want to be associated with this person, Jesus, because, you know, the leaders of the Jewish sect at the time were definitely not his fans and certainly not his followers. But Nicodemus' curiosity of who is this Jesus, what is this compelling message, why does he have this ability to perform these miracles, who is Jesus? He has to know. And Jesus explains to him the message. And Nicodemus doesn't get it. It just goes over his head. Jesus says, a man must be born again. Well, Nicodemus puts this thoroughly in a fleshly mode. So how do I get back into my mother's womb and be born again? I don't get this. What do you mean being born again? And Jesus says, you are born again by water and the word. He says the spirit, but the spirit is contained in the word. We use that term, water and the word. The word of God with a capital W. What does the beginning of the book of John say? In the beginning was the word, and the word was with God, and the word was God. God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. So we are born again by water Baptism, we've talked about that, and the Word. It's how we come into His kingdom. We talked on Ash Wednesday for those that were here that night what it really means. Where did all this Ash stuff come from? And we go back to the Old Testament and look at look at King David, who sinned horrendously before God. And when he realized the gravity of his sin. He spent a time mourning his sin in sackcloth and ashes. And ashes are a cleansing agent. That's what they use to clean, just like an old lava soap. That's where the ashes come from. It is a way to cleanse us on the outside. But Jesus comes to clean us, not just on the outside, but on the inside as well. This is being born again. We are changed We are new creations in Christ in spite of our sinful selves. And one of the greatest problems the church has ever faced since the beginning of the church age is defining what makes us followers of Jesus, what gives us the right to the kingdom. Over the centuries, churches have added requirements Imply that you have to earn it. You have to do A, B, C, and D. If you don't do A, B, C, and D, you cannot. You cannot be a part of God's kingdom. It is like, believe in Jesus, but you have to do this. Believe in Jesus, but you have to accept this. Yet, this and that and the other are not contained here as a mandate. They're not there. To me, that's one of the greatest tools that the enemy of our soul has ever used is to complicate the simplicity of the salvation given as a free gift in Jesus Christ. There's nothing we can do. I'll give Luther some really good credit here. Luther, during this spiritual battle of his life that started in a thunderstorm, going home afraid for his life, 
thinking I'm going to die out here being struck by lightning in this horrible storm goes to St. Catherine. I will become a monk if you spare my life. Well, Luther was pretty good about keeping his word. And he became a monk and ultimately a priest in the, in the then Roman Catholic Church, which gave him access that a lot of people didn't have to the written word of God. And so one day he's there doing like a lot of other monks do because they didn't have a printing press just yet. That was just around the corner. He's writing out God's word. And he hits this thing, we're justified by faith. Wait a minute, I thought we were justified by our works. That's what I've been told, that's what I've been teaching. And that started him thinking, wait a minute. We are saved by grace, by faith, not by any works that we can do. There's nothing we can do to earn it. There's nothing we can do to buy it. There's nothing we can do to just to give it to somebody else as our gift. It's God's gift to us. So Jesus, and this is where I sometimes, and believe me, I love my evangelical friends. I worked with them for years in ministry and still do. Understanding the simplicity of being born again, sometimes even my evangelical brethren can kind of complicate it too. Why can't we take what Jesus says at face value instead of trying to impute things that he didn't say or add meaning to something he never meant? I guess it's because we want to have something a little more complex. So we think we've learned and done something special when the reality is, oh, faith is so simple. Why do we complicate? Why do we complicate what Jesus says? As he talks to Nicodemus, he is already looking ahead in his journey. Just as Moses lifted up his staff in the wilderness, so must the Son of Man be lifted up already foreshadowing his crucifixion, that Jesus will be raised up. One of my favorite newer hymns that I became acquainted with about 25 years ago, it's not that old, it's in the last, what, 30, 40 years, Lift High the Cross, Lift High the Cross. We lift the cross up. We look to Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith. Nothing we can do to earn it. Nothing we can do to buy it. Nothing we can do to get it. It's not for sale wholesale on Amazon. It's just a gift. And we make it so complicated. He that believeth on him. This is Jesus. Believe on Jesus. Is not condemned. But he that believeth not is condemned already because he hath not believed in the name of the only begotten Son of God. And this is the condemnation, that the light is come into the world and men love darkness rather than light because their deeds are evil. This is a couple of verses beyond what we read today. Let me say that again. And this is the condemnation that the light has come into the world and men love darkness rather than light because their deeds were evil. For everyone that doeth evil hateth light, neither cometh to the light lest his deeds should be reproved. But he that doeth truth cometh to the light that his deeds may be made manifest and they are wrought in God. They're done in God. Bottom line of the message, what is the take home from what I'm saying today? Faith is so simple. Faith is so simple. Those that believe on the name, notice on the name of Jesus Christ, and I want to define what that really, really means. 
And maybe this will give you the final example. We've seen that believe on in the scripture a lot. And sometimes we just assume believe in and believe on are always interchangeable. Not exactly. In our English, we may confuse that and say in. Let's understand on. What is the difference between in and on? We have an airline pilot here that can probably understand what I'm about to say. I can tell you that I believe in Delta Airlines. I truly believe in Delta Airlines. Though on the ground I think I might see something flying across the sky, I've heard that aircraft fly from Fort Lauderdale to New York. I really have never seen one, but I believe in Delta Airlines. But when I go to the airport and get my ticket and I get on that plane... And that plane takes off, heading to New York. I am now believing on Delta Airlines. I'm riding it. I'm a part of it. It's not just an abstract belief in. It's a believe on. And there lies the greatest difference in our faith. Faith is so simple. Believe on Jesus Christ. You don't have to know how to fly the plane. He's got that part covered. Simply trust him. That's the obedience part. Trust him. Trust him. Believe on him. Faith is so simple. We don't have to complicate it at all. That's the takeaway today as we are heading toward the cross and ultimately the celebration of his resurrection, that faith is so simple. Even a child can do it. Amen. My faith looks up to thee Thou Lamb of Calvary
even as a young child, the words of that hymn, My Faith Looks Up to Thee, were words of deep encouragement. And, and the words of that hymn have been a part of my life for going on 60 some odd years since I first heard it as a, as a youngster. It has carried me through some of the most difficult things that I've ever had to face in my life. One of these days when my heart lets me, I will actually share a recording that is about 17 or 18 years old, probably 17 years old now, of a message that I preached about that hymn at one of the darkest times in my life before the passing of my my first wife. It was one of her favorite hymns as well, to to know that my faith looks up to thee, thou Lamb of Calvary, Savior divine. Now hear me while I pray. Take all my guilt away and let me from this day be wholly thine. As the final verse of that hymn reminds us, when ends life transient dream, when death's cold sullen stream shall o'er me roll. Bless Savior, then in love, fear and distrust remove. Oh, bear me safe above a ransomed soul. The words of this hymn have always been an encouragement, not just in times of difficulty, when we face the loss of our own life or the life of a loved one. The idea of knowing that my faith looks up to thee regardless of our current circumstances is the most important thing we as Christians have. We have hope. That's one of the reasons as I'm talking about this radio program and podcast, what directions does it take? Do I just sit here and share the bad news? Or do we dwell and make use of the good news? I think the latter is the most important thing to do to share the good news, to encourage each other, to form our own community, to get out from among the world, we don't need to be there. We are in this world, but we are not of this world. And unfortunately, too many of us are so entrenched in the world, you live in fear. Fear of everything, including viruses and politics and the mark of the beast and all that. We we go into a fear mode instead of a victory mode. We should be victorious, not a fearful people. We'll probably talk about that a little bit tomorrow. I think I have a guest for the program. I know Friday, Friday we're going to really get into some messages of hope and a few practical things. And I know the weekend audience is a little bit different. We actually add people in other parts of the world. So we're looking forward to tying a lot of this week together on Friday. If you believe in the ministry of Truth to Ponder, would you consider a gift to help us cover the airtime cost? There's a lot of things that will be happening with this program. I, The Lord has just laid on my heart some wonderful opportunity. I can't wait till I can tie it all down and share it all with you. But if you want to help support financially, make a check payable to Ancient Word Radio. Ancient Word Radio. Our mailing address in Georgia is 21 Berkshire, B-E-R-K-S-H-I-R-E, 21 Berkshire Lane, number 263, number 263, our secure P.O. Box, Sky Valley, Georgia, 30537. This has been Truth to Ponder with Bob Bierman. To find out more, visit our website, Truth, the number 2, and the word ponder.com. That's truth, the number two, ponder.com. Truth to ponder, shining the light of truth in a darkening world.